This is Unit 4 on Ecotourism. We will be dealing with a presentation on Ecotourism by the President of Tourist Hotels Association of Sri Lanka, Mr. Sri Lal Mithapala. Hello everyone, my name is Sri Lal Mithapala. I am the President of the Hotels Association of Sri Lanka and today I am going to talk to you about Ecotourism. In this program we will first discuss what your ecotourism really means, what the definition of ecotourism is. Then we look at what are the elements that go into making a destination a proper ecotourist destination. And then we'll compare some of the things that we can see in Sri Lanka and see how Sri Lanka uh, is compared as a good ecotourism destination. To start off the program, uh, we will look at the definition of Ecotourism. Ecotourism is defined as, the, as responsible travel to natural areas that conserves the environment and improves the well-being of local people. There are some important words here uh, in this definition. One is responsible. That means when you travel, if you are an eco tour traveler, you respect the place you are going to and take precautions that you don't damage the environment that you go to visit. The second important word here is natural areas. You are looking at natural beauty of a country, uh, not the normal things that people go for, shopping and stuff like that. You are looking at natural areas. The third aspect is that in your travels, you try to conserve the environment and also improve the well-being of local people. So let's go on to Looking at the concept of ecotourism, that was the pure definition. Ecotourism includes environmentally responsible travel. That means when you travel, you are aware of the environment, taking precautions that you don't uh, throw garbage, things like that, and be very careful how you uh, travel with an environment conscious manner. Second important thing, like we discussed at the uh, definition, the visitation is to relatively undisturbed natural habitats and areas. So you are not going to the normal run of the mill places like the beaches and the shops and the cities. You are going into areas which are fairly natural, pristine in a country to look at them and enjoy them. You enjoy and appreciate nature and culture, that is part of ecotourism. It supports conservation, that is a very important thing, so whatever ecotourism does you don't damage the environment, you make efforts to see how you can conserve the environment. It has a low visitor impact. Now, when you say low visitor impact, we, we will talk about mass market tourism a little, a little while later, but in mass market tourism, there's a lot of people who visit a country and a particular place. So, when you have a large number of people, obviously, there's going to be damage to the environment, damage to the area. Now, ecotourism believes in small numbers, low visitor impact, so that people coming to a particular place will have a lower impact than a large number of people coming in. The other important aspect of uh, ecotourism is that it involves the local population. You are not talking only of someone going to a hotel and uh, having food and beverage in the hotel. You are talking about engaging local people as much as possible the handicraft sellers, the other providers at the beach, whoever it is. So, it involves local population in the mainstream of tourism. And by that what happens is, you, the tourists start spending not only in the established uh, hotels, but also start spending in various small establishments, which has then an economic effect that people's money, the money that the tourists spend is trickled down to the other parts of the population. So, ecotourism really is an embodiment of three aspects, the environment, the economic aspects and the social aspects. So, those are the three elements that come and where they cross or the common area is really what ecotourism is all about. Now, basically there are two types of tourism you can think of, very basically. Of course, there are definitions, but basically mass market tourism where you have hordes of people coming in buses large numbers visiting very popular places, beaches, uh, cities and that is what you call mass market tourism or conventional tourism. 
and the new emerging trend is ecotourism. So now let's look at the two aspects of mass market tourism and ecotourism. Mass market by the very word of it, it's large scale. You're talking about a large number of people all in organized groups going and visiting places. On the other hand, ecotourism is small scale. You're talking about small groups of people who are interested in a particular type of activity, nature, culture, bird watching, wildlife, things like that. Mass market touris tourism, because of the sheer numbers, there is bound to be some environment degradation. The environment gets damaged when a large number of people go through a particular place. Take for example, our Sigiriya rock. There are about 3,000 people climbing that rock every day. So naturally garbage, damage to the environment, damage to the bushes happens. On the ecotourism side, of course, ecotourism is all about protecting the environment. You are going to a place because you love that place, because it's a natural beauty and you are going to appreciate it. And you're going to leave it like that for other people to see. Over visitation, as I said, like our own Sigiriya or the Dehiwala Zoo, for example, huge numbers of people. How do you manage that situation? Whereas ecotourism is all about low numbers, small groups, specialist groups who are interested. Market uses very little raw material for their uh, hotel activities. You get imported things and cook can give the guests. Whereas in the case of ecotourism, the emphasis is on local ethnic handicrafts, food, experience. The whole thing is about experiencing local materials. Final point is in mass marketing, there is very little economic benefit that filters down to the lower end of the population. People come and stay in large hotels, stay there, go to their food and beverage outlets, but very few people go outside. Whereas in ecotourism, the whole aspect revolves around going to a small place, interacting with the villagers, seeing how they live, appreciating that so that the villagers also get a benefit. So therefore, to develop ecotourism, you will require nice natural environments, what people would like to come and see. You must have wildlife. You must have hospitable people. Because remember, ecotourism is all about going out there and meeting people. So if the people are not friendly, if they are not hospitable, you can't call it a proper ecotourism destination. And finally, you must have basic infrastructure facilities for people to go to these places and see. Some of the world's ecotourism hotspots are Costa Rica, which has had a very good track record of being one of the world's best ecotourism destinations. Kenya, with its wildlife, Belize, Alaska. Again, a very pristine environment, which you don't get anywhere else in the world. Uh, New Zealand, if you have seen, New Zealand, in fact, takes this to an extreme in their branding. Their whole country branding is New Zealand 100% pure. That's the tagline. So you can imagine what a powerful uh, message it's big talking about ecotourism. We are 100% pure. We are not mass market. Huge land uninhabited places to go and walk in the mountains. Botswana, again, a lot of wildlife, Gabon wildlife, and Bhutan, trekking, hills, Himalayas, Sherpas, you know, the whole thing. So this is, uh, gives you an idea of what the other countries are doing, uh, who are leading the way in ecotourism. So now let's come